the evidence in front of Tony Blair did not support the conclusion that there was an imminent threat at the time we went to war. Indeed, he acknowledged um, a year later, later in 2004, um, that he accepted that there was not an imminent threat okay. of the sort that he was so tending to describe. That was a, a yes to that if you wish. But I, don't know, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, I'm just no. trying to get clarification. Yes. Was it reasonable for Tony Blair at that time that he made that statement to suppose that there was an imminent threat? Objectively, no. Subjectively, I can't answer for him. You mean that he might have had a sudden, you mean that he might have had a sudden rush of blood to the head or he may have just made a misjudgment? Isn't that what subjective means in this context? Subjectively, and it is addressed in the report in this sense, is that he stated it was his certain belief at the time. Now, that's subjective. You ask an objective question, was it reasonable to entertain that belief? To which I say the evidence does not sufficiently support it. I haven't actually. I've asked a question which is the test, well understood, the test of a reasonable man. Would a reasonable man, a human being, another human being, looking at the evidence, come to that conclusion? If you're <coughs> posing that question with regard to a statement of an imminent threat to the United Kingdom... I am. ...then in that case, I have to say, no, there was not sufficient evidence to sustain that belief objectively at the time. So he misled or set aside... He misled the House or he set aside evidence in order to lead the House down a line of uh, thought and belief with his 18th March speech, didn't he? Again, um, you force me, Chairman, into trying to draw a distinction between what <clears throat> Mr Blair as Prime Minister believed at the time and sought to persuade the House and the people of his of belief. Of course, and I'm on asking one hand, whether it's reasonable he was doing. As things have turned out, we know it was not. As things appeared at the time, the evidence to support it was more qualified than he, in effect, gave expression to. Well, that's not what you're really, what you've really been saying all along, is it? It's not a question of whether it was more qualified. This is a test. It's a test of would a reasonable man conclude that this evidence supported going to war? If I may say so, Chairman, that seems to me an easier question for me to answer, because the answer to that is no.